Deus, Pai. Sede, for the Lord Jesus loves you so much. That I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, fill her from her head down to her toes. Father, you didn't give her just a little bit of yourself. You gave her all. So, Father, I pray right now, Lord God. I gotta say something. I can't help this. You're reminding me a lot of me. I, I knew that God was doing something in my life, and I really didn't understand what He was doing. But I knew this was one step that I had to do, even at a young age. And it could be could have been because of everything I've seen growing up to this time. But I'm going to tell you what, son. Your life is never going to be the same. It's going to be better. It's going to be better. Are you ready? Are you ready to get rid of the old man? Are you ready? You ready? Lucas? Decision. 
Lucas, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, fill them. Fill them, Lord Jesus. Fill them, Lord God. I knew that the Lord <clears throat> had given me a word for you, Sage, but I didn't think it would be witnessed before I even came here tonight because I was thinking the word that the Lord gave me was that you are your brother's keeper. And I got that word while I was taking a shower. And when I got out of the shower, Sister Monica asked me, she said she had something for you. So she asked me if I would read it for her because she's not here tonight. And this is how good God is and how God provides a witness between two people that believe and two people that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Tonight is just the beginning for you and your brother on this amazing walk being filled with the Holy Ghost. This is what she um, wants me to say to you. <clears throat> I'm going to read it to you like she's talking to you because <laughs> that's how she sent it to me. Sage, when you were born, I held you. You were so tiny, and I knew God was going to do great things in your life. I'm giving you the vision that God gave me. It was that you would be as Miriam, the sister of Moses, and the sister of Aaron. They played, she played leading the Israelites into a celebration song slash dance. And she said, never stop dancing. You bless so many people. Love you, Sister Monica. So, <laughs> so the word that God gave me that you're you are your brother's keeper. And when she said this, do you know how important Miriam was? Listen to this. Miriam first appears in the Bible in Exodus 2, 4, as she watches her baby brother float down the Nile River. Now, uh, the amazing thing is that he was put in a basket. They call it a basket, but it was actually a miniature ark. 
It was an ark. And it was covered with pitch so that he would escape Pharaoh's order to kill all male Jewish infants. Listen how cool this is because God is so awesome. This is how he preserves us. Miriam boldly approached Pharaoh's daughter who found the baby and offered her own mother. You got to hear this, right? So Moses' own mother was able to take care of him even though the order went out that all the males, all the Jewish infant males would be killed. But he was saved. Miriam was not mentioned again until after the Hebrews had crossed the Red Sea. After the water swallowed up the pursuing Egyptian army, Miriam took a timbrel, a tambourine. Remember what Brother Bud said to you? <laughs> That's why I thought it kind of tied right in. A tambourine-like instrument and led women in a song and dance of victory. The words of Miriam's song are among the oldest poetic lines of verse in the Bible. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. <sighs> Stay humble. Look after your brother. Even though I know how little brothers can be. <laughs> Sometimes they can annoy you, but God's got a special purpose for the two of you. Because the same night, you're baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. You're identified with his death, his burial, and now his resurrection. And now you can walk in comp bold confidence that he's living inside of the two of you separately, but he's living inside you. Lucas, look after your sister. She's a precious gift to you. I know, big sisters can sometimes, you know, get a little pushy maybe or what have you, but I remember one time when Pastor Dale stood Victoria Vega up and he put his arm around her and Brother Nate stepped right in there. That's what God wants you to do. You keep your sister safe. He's got your back. He just wants you to look out for one another. Amen? Okay, so I have a word for both of you. And the night I got baptized, I felt the, I felt the presence of the Lord in my heart and in my mind to tell both of you well, mainly it was for Sage, because I didn't know you were going to get baptized. But since I heard that you were getting baptized, I got a word from God for both of you. Sage, my favorite verse is Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of salvation to all who believe, to the Jews first, then to the Israelites. And in the first part of the verse, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, I see you going out in the world as a new man of God and spreading the word everywhere you go. And now for Lucas. I see you growing up and having friends and sometimes friends that will stray away from God and the gospel. And you're going to stay strong and you're going to not have those ungodly-like friendships. And you're going to, like I said, you're going to stay strong and you're going to be a good man of, the, of Christ. Okay? The Lord wanted me to say to you both, tell them that they are chosen by me.
short one today from Uncle Nick. Um, can you, um, you know, if you ever look at a princess in the world, they have all kinds of etiquettes they have to follow. One of them is what's called an etiquette of the eyes. Okay? They look a certain way. They know when and where to look. And here's the word of the Lord for you, Sage. You're going to draw a lot of attention. Okay? And you want to keep your eyes level. You don't have to get like this. You're not snotty. You never look down. Remember how I told you in Sunday school? You don't ever apologize for who you are. You keep walking. But you're going to draw a lot of attention. Okay? But you just keep your eyes set. And you know on what. I don't need, I don't need to tell you that. Now, Lucas, I just have to be obedient with you. And I don't even know, because I don't really know you that well. But I know this, and this is what I, I'm being, I'm trying to be obedient to the Lord. You're a fighter. Now you're like, what are you talking about? There is a great fight in you. And you're being anchored. You've been anchored tonight. And some of that frustration, right, when you're a fighter, you're just looking for something. To f you don't know what it is, and it comes out the wrong way. But you're a fighter for him. There is a great fight in you. And I don't care how you feel or what you encounter. Don't ever, for the, don't ever forget that. When it matters most, you have what it takes to overcome the enemy. That's a leadership trait. I mean, both your parents are bosses. So you're going to learn from the best. But you have it in you, man. You have it in you. God put it in you. I told you I wasn't going to say anything, didn't I? <laughs> but unfortunately, I have to listen to somebody else, so I'm going to say something. You are a healer, okay? You're going to heal people through your music and through your dance. You're not just going to be a singer. You're not, just gonna, you're, not, you're not just singing praise and worship songs for nothing. You're not just going to do it here in the church when somebody comes. They're, they're going to get touched by your music. They're going to get touched by your dance. But people out there are going to be touched by your music and your dance. You're going to be healing people. They're going to be crying. You're going to touch their heart in a way that nobody else can touch through your music and through your, your dance. And you just need to keep your heart open, open to him and what he wants. Keep your spirit open and free because you're going to free a lot of people through your dance and through your music. And that's, that's your biggest gift right now that God has given to you. And you need to just keep developing it, just keep going on, and just keep doing what you're doing, and just keep your focus and your eye at all times on him. And Lucas, when he said you're a fighter, I can see that. I can definitely see that. But there's such a tender little heart you have. You are just the sweetest little boy. You really are. And don't let the world or anybody else take that sweetness away. Keep that tender little heart of yours open to the Lord, and he will speak to you, and he will tell you great things. Just keep that little heart always open, and be as sweet as you can to people and love on them because you too are going to heal them and bring them into the kingdom. So keep your heart open at all times. I love you both. And this is the greatest gift a grandmother could ever have. Amen. Amen. Sister Fran, hallelujah! There's a P.S. for Lucas. The Lord hears you singing when you're all by yourself. Don't ever be ashamed to sing unto the Lord.
I don't have a word for you two. But I have a word for you two. And I have a word for her. And I really don't know how to say it, but hang on. Do you see what the Lord's doing? Can you see what the Lord is doing? He's doing something beyond what your problems are. He's touched your family in a way that you never thought it'd ever be done. Not only did he just save you, he's got your whole family. Your whole family is in his eye. And Missy, because of your mother, you were a little unstable in your life. Even though you came to church and got a little stable, but you're still a little stable. That's why God had to bring along a man with stability to make you stable, to bring everything to pass what she's been praying for. Now, you got it because of this blessed lady right here. And your dad. Who would have thunk it? Only God can do something like this. Now. Can I talk to you as a dad? Even though I'm not your dad? This might go wrong with some other people, but God has favorites. God picks out families. And he has favorites. And all week long, he's talked to me about you two. That he's picked you out because you're his favorite. Now he's given you a charge. And this charge has been going on for a while. And I'm not going to go back to when the charge started. But we know when this charge started, don't we? But you cannot raise your kids. The Bible says train up a child in the ways that he should go. When he gets older, he will not depart from it. Now, you're raising King's kids. You gave them to him when they were a baby. He's given them back to you. Now he's, you gave them back to him again. He's given them back to you. Now you cannot raise these kids like any other kids. You're going, to be, you're going to have to be stricter on your kids. And you know what the crazy thing is? That's called discipline on yourself. This is what I've learned over my 59 years. My dad could say one thing. It would go in one ear and out the other. But his actions stuck with me. And that's what they're going to be looking at, is your actions. At every circumstances, good, bad, and otherwise, they're going to be watching you to see how you are going to handle it in the midst of any situation. This is a heavy load. But everything what they were, what everybody talked to them about, that's a heavy load. You don't want to send those two out in the world without being fully armed. And here's the crazy thing. They ain't going to be babies forever. It's time to start growing them up. So you're going to have to start doing things. Oh, I hate this. Because as I'm saying it, it's coming back at me. It's called responsibility. Something heavy. But it's the greatest thing out of everything. Because when you're standing here, watching your grandbabies come from these two, 
getting put in the water. What did you say, Grandma? Greatest gift ever? That's greater than anything else. If you can't save your, your family, there's no sense of going out in the world and trying to save the world. We would have taught very well on that part. Save your household. Fight for them. Protect them. Cover them. You might have to spend a lot of nights up when they're out and about. Coming in at all hours of the night. But God knows. And you know I know something? When they do come in at all hours of no, you train them right, there's still this peace down inside of you that you know that they're doing the right thing. You don't have to worry about them. Anybody else? I love you guys. I really love you guys. So this is really just a double witness kind of thing for what he just said to you guys. Because what I saw was, I saw a sage, but... Obviously, it applies to both of them, but <clears throat> I just kept getting set apart, set apart, set apart. And all of us are set apart. All of our kids are set apart. But I particularly <laughs> see Sage being someone in the midst of her girlfriends, her friends, and glowing. And she's going to have these friends that are worldly friends. They're secular. You know, they like all these things. But she's going to have a different heart and a different way about her and a different way of doing things. She's not going to be the one, and this is kind of, I'm prophesying sort of. She's not going to be the one sitting on her phone with all her friends. She's going to be set apart. She's not going to mix in with the world, I guess is how you would say it. But that means it's you two that are responsible for part of that. And that's what I got, but I didn't really want to say it because that's kind of a hard thing. <laughs> but when you said it, I said, okay, that's... But it's, it's hard. It's hard to put your foot down and say, yes, that is what all these other kids are doing, and that's what accept what's acceptable out there, but you're not going to do it. So seek the Lord in all of your parenting with them. <laughs> to know what battles to fight and what not to, and to be strong in the battles that the Lord says you need to put your foot down. Guess what? Can't help it. Come here. Lord Jesus, right now, I put a covering over top of these ones. That, Father, that the world's influence will not affect them. It'll try coming at them, and it'll keep coming and keep coming. But, God, this shield, what you put a place over top of them, will not penetrate. It will not get penetrated. Because, Father, there is going to be this generation that is going to stand up for righteousness and for holiness. That, God, they ain't going to be like the world. They're not going to be like the world. They're not going to look like the world. They're not going to act like the world. But, Father, they're going to have a light that's inside them that shines so bright that they're going to draw the world to you. So, Father, I place this hand, my hands upon these two, that you cover them. Can I have uh, this whole family gather? Can we stand? I'm going to pray. I'm going to seal this whole thing, and then we're going to go home before the snow comes. Come on. You need prayer? Okay. Let me pray for the, let me do this first. All right. I, can everybody here grab? A, you cold? I'm sorry. This is what happened.